Hi, I'm Tim Gideon for PC Mag. Today we're checking out the Motorola Zoom and comparing it to the Apple iPad 2. Let's look at the cameras first. The Zoom features a front-facing 2 megapixel camera and a rear-facing 5 megapixel lens. It doesn't take masterpieces, but the camera app is loaded with settings and shooting modes you'll find familiar if you've ever messed around with a typical point and shoot. The rear-facing camera captures video in 720p and it can be edited in Movie Studio, which is the free included video editing app. It's not as intuitive as iMovie, but Movie Studio works just fine and the video quality from the Zoom generally looks better. The cameras on the iPad 2 are an improvement over no cameras at all, but that's not saying very much. The front-facing VGA quality camera shoots pretty low resolution footage that's fine for video chats and not a whole lot else. The rear-facing camera is the real issue. It offers less than a megapixel of resolution. Yikes. Stretch those images across the iPad's 9.7 inch screen and you're looking at some pretty grainy, noisy shots. Only excellent lighting seems to improve the images. The iPad 2 shoots 720p video which looks higher quality than the photos it shoots, but neither it nor the zoom shoot footage that you'd get from even a typical point-and-shoot camera. While the zoom clearly takes better images, the iPad 2 has better apps built around its camera. The graphics prowess is on display in Photo Booth, for instance, as the iPad distorts real-time images according to your touch. The camera app itself is pretty bare bones with fewer features than Android's camera app, but iMovie, which to be fair costs $4.99 versus the free movie studio on the Zoom, is a much more intuitive and fun video editing app. From a hardware angle, the Zoom is a clear camera edge, but I'll give the iPad 2 the slight edge for camera related apps. As far as video chat, I'm gonna give the edge to the Zoom. Google's talk works across platforms, so I can chat with my buddy on my Zoom as long as he has a Gmail account, which is free, and a webcam. Uh, no matter what type of computer or operating system he's on, we're able to converse. FaceTime works just fine. Visually, it's not any more or less stunning than Google's talk. In fact, the resolution of the video chats on both devices is not very good. But because FaceTime is an Apple-only app, it is pretty limiting. We'll give the Zoom the edge because you don't need the Zoom or another Motorola product in order to chat with someone using Google Talk. In iOS 4.3, multitasking is as simple as showing you the icons for apps you have open when you double click the home button and what song you're currently playing or have paused. It's definitely useful, but Honeycomb's view is a bit better because in one glimpse, you get a good sense of what every app is doing. You get these live thumbnail shots with a text description to the side of what it's doing. On the iPad 2, you have to open up an app to to see what it's actually doing, so I'm gonna give the edge to the zoom here again, because with one glimpse, I already know what it's doing. On the iPad, there are no pop-up notifications for email. If you're playing Angry Birds and receive a ton of emails, you'll never know it until you check the home screen, and then you'll only see a number telling you how many you got, not really giving you a sense of who sent them or what the subject matter was. But the zoom allows for pop-up notifications no matter what you're doing. If you get an email while you're playing Angry Birds, uh, in the lower right-hand corner, you get a notification. It tells you who sent it and the subject subject line. If you don't like that, you can turn it off, but at least you have the option. And with iOS 4.3, you do not. The Zoom also has a superior search function to the iPad 2. When you search for, say, Radiohead on your iPad 2, if you have Radiohead music, it's going to show you all your songs. And at the bottom of the list of songs, it will give you the option to search the web or Wikipedia for Radiohead results. That's definitely useful, but the Zoom one-ups the iPad 2 here. It performs three simultaneous instant searches. By the time you type in R-A-D-I, you've got a bunch of different radio head options you can click on immediately. You can click on a button that will just take you to the Google search page, or there's a column full of information if you have anything related to radio head on your device. Since I don't, we can type in Angry Birds on the Zoom, and you'll see that I get web results, and I get the game on my device that I can just tap and then go straight to it. So it may sound like the Zoom is superior to the iPad 2, but that's not really the case. Uh, and one genuine surprise, the iPad 2 has a better video on the web browsing experience. Why? The Zoom has no flash support. And although the iPad 2 doesn't, Apple seems to have convinced the web world that Flash is not the future, and a lot of websites are using different methods to get video up. If you go to ESPN's website, you can play video, and uh, you can't do that currently on the Zoom. Yes, Motorola has promised that Flash support is coming, but it's not there yet. We've got to judge what's in front of us. But the point is, Apple is finding ways to work around its lack of Flash support, and right now, the Zoom has no Flash support, so advantage iPad 2. It's also worth noting that the Zoom browser has the tendency to load 
mobile versions of websites, while the iPad 2 often defaults to the full website, or in the case of ESPN when we went there, it actually loaded a greeting page offering a choice between the mobile or full sites, whichever one we wanted. But what's one of the primary reasons anyone's going to consider a tablet? apps, right? The iPad 2 clearly wins here. The Apple Store has just tons of apps dedicated specifically for the iPad. Apps intended for the iPhone still generally work on the iPad. They just appear smaller. If you want to enlarge them, you tap the double size button and it fills the iPad screen almost. Uh, you do lose resolution, but if that's not for you, you can always just downsize it again and watch it at its regular resolution. The Android market is frankly a mess. Uh, there aren't many apps dedicated for tablets, but the ones that are have uh, problems a lot of the times. Why? Because uh, there's so many different devices to design for with different screen sizes and using uh, different versions of Android. It's really a crapshoot what you're going to get. Conan O'Brien's um, Team Coco app, which says it's made for a tablet, looks pretty bad on the zoom. It doesn't fill up the screen. It doesn't really work well with the accelerometer. The video that does fill up the screen is at a pretty low resolution. Even the Google Bodies app that was showcased at the Honeycomb launch for the zoom can't really hold a candle to say the Jenga app for the iPad 2, which has more graceful motion and more complex graphics. So the zoom definitely has some small victories here with a better email notification, better search within the device, but Apple kind of nails what matters, better app selection, and a better internet experience. Throw in the fact that the zoom feels significantly bulkier than the new iPad and the better resolution of the zoom screen starts to matter a lot less. Until we get a better look at the BlackBerry Playbook and the Galaxy Tab that's going to run Honeycomb, it's really all about just the iPad 2 and the Motorola Zoom. The iPad 2 is a better experience right now, but the Motorola Zoom is still a good tablet, and if you're determined to live outside the Apple ecosystem, it definitely has some advantages that I think we showcase in this video for you. Thanks for watching, and for even more in-depth coverage, go to PCMag.com.